Hello! Component composition and prop drilling are two really important React concepts to understand that if you do, give you a lot of benefits, so better application performance in case you get a lot of re-renders, you also get uh, better organizability, better maintainability for your project, and all in all they give you a lot of benefits, in particular three that I'm gonna cover in this video once you understand them. And so you understand them, let's take a look right now at how prop drilling and component composition really work in React. React. Okay, so before we get to the three benefits that are really good when avoiding prop drilling and implementing this component composition, let's take a look at how Dataflow works when you're working with a component composition first. So I've prepared a little example here, and it's a button, it's a separate component, and the button has two properties. First, we have an on click, and second, we are um, passing it a text, so a string um, of log it. And let's see how that looks in the button. So the on click in TypeScript is a function that returns void. We receive that as the props. And then uh, on the button, we have an on click that just invokes the on click. So that is really nothing special. But as you can see here, the log it, we receive that as children. So these children are whatever is between the tags of this closing tag and the a beginning tag, so that couldn't only be a string, but that could be anything, that could be a div, and then that exact div would also be passed as children and rendered right here inside of the button. Let's get rid of the div though, and when I save that, and I think the server should be started, it is, and we take a look at the server, we can see the um, button, and when I click it, it says clicked in the console, because that's what we um, instructed it to do from this um, main app component. Now, um, as I said earlier, that could be a div, but it could also be something more useful, like an image. Uh, so we can pass an image that has a source of something I prepared, um, and that should be available under logo.png. And when we save that, um, the logo is giant, but this video is not really about the styles in the first place. So as you can see, even when we click the logo, that logo counts as the a button because it is literally part of the button and being rendered inside of the button as children and that's why when we click the logo the console log of clicked also appears. Now I think that example is pretty self-explanatory but I've prepared a little more sophisticated or um, yeah, well, not really sophisticated, but a, a bit Jesus Christ, the example is just better to illustrate my point, okay? So um, this might look a bit unfamiliar if you're not used to working with TypeScript, but uh, it's pretty much the exact same thing as if you were working with regular JavaScript. Essentially, the structure is the following. We have the main app component, we have a username in this component, and that component returns a dashboard. Now, the dashboard is defined right here, and if you're not familiar with TypeScript, the dashboard props just define what type the prop is, so that's a string in our case, because this is a string, we receive that string, and this component, the dashboard, that's important to notice, the dashboard doesn't care about the prop at all. It just forwards this prop, the username, to another prop, and then we have the code inside the dashboard that actually, uh, you know, displays the dashboard, that's not relevant um, for this project. Um, I just want to hammer the point home, the dashboard does not care about the props, but just forwards them to our third component, which is the welcome message, which then receives the username and displays it in the welcome message, good evening username. So when I save this and reload the page, we can see it says good evening and then the username, which is exactly what we want. But what we are doing here, passing the prop to one component, which then doesn't care about it and passes it to another component, which then renders it or even further um, passes it to another component and another blah, 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 and that then renders it, it's called prop drilling. And the main disadvantage of prop drilling is that it makes your code way less maintainable and it can lead to a lot of props that you pass on each component. And it's very avoidable and you get a lot of benefits from avoiding it as well. There are two ways of really avoiding prop drilling in this example. So the first one would be using context. So we could say const context is equal to uh, create context, which we get from React. And then we can initialize it as a default empty string. And then in here we can say we are going to wrap the dashboard in a context.provider. Uh, now we can 
copy the closing tag of that provider, paste it behind the dashboard, and that is gonna take a value, and that value is gonna be our user name. Now we could completely avoid having this prop in here. This interface would be obsolete and we don't need the username in here anyways. Uh, we wouldn't need the dashboard props and the dashboard, uh, the, the welcome message wouldn't receive any props either. We could remove that. The interface would be obsolete again. And now the username we can get from the uh, use context. And inside of that use context, we could pass or original context and now there's one more error which is that the dashboard doesn't take any username prop we can save that and that should display the exact same thing so context works just fine so why is context still disadvantageous to the third approach that provides us with multiple benefits that i've prepared here for you so that would one be a better overview secondly that would be a more control at a higher component level. And thirdly, very important also performance. Those are the three benefits we don't get when using context. And when using context, we also need to make sure that we always use this value, that we only use the username somewhere where um, it's wrapped in the context in a higher level. So it also decreases maintainability. That's why we don't really want to use context or why I think context is not the um, best approach. So we can revert a lot of these changes. Uh, we can get rid of the context for now. And now let me show you how to really harness the power of component uh, compositing so we get a better overview, more control at a higher level and better performance. So essentially the principle of component composition is that we can replace the props we are drilling down from component to component to component by essentially doing what we did right here and that is rendering children. Now to get started with this approach we first want to remove the username from the dashboard and also implement a closing tag on the dashboard because as you remember everything we pass in between the starting tag and the closing tag will be rendered as children here in the um, dashboard and what we want as children well we could have something like the welcome message itself. So we could pass the welcome message and then we could say username is equal to user name. And that way we are rendering the dashboard. The dashboard is not gonna render the welcome message itself, but it's just gonna render the children. And now that children is a different type that is of type react node that we get from react. And as we can see, the arrows are gone. We don't need the context up here anymore. We can get rid of the context. And let's take a look at what we're doing. Okay, so we have the dashboard, which is this component right here. And as the children props, we are passing the welcome message um, that is this component right here. So essentially what we're doing is just forwarding the children right here instead of the props. So we removed one level from the prop drilling and also we have more control because um, before the dashboard, we just render it um, up here, pass it a, you know, a prop, but we don't really know what is inside of the dashboard and that decreases our uh, reusability because everything we define in the dashboard will always be the exact same whenever we call this component besides specific, everything that is specific to this prop. But when we're doing what we were just doing and I can, well, I can't go back in VS Code sadly, but we did do the uh, dashboard and inside that dashboard, we will also need a dashboard closing tag. And inside that dashboard, we are gonna render our welcome message. And there we are gonna pass the uh, prop. That's gonna be user name. That's gonna be self-closing. And there is still an error here because we need to return whatever is here. And that's still gonna give us an error because, well, this is gonna be of type children and the children are gonna be of type react node. And we are now where we were before, almost. We still need the children. And now we are where we were before. And that's gonna produce the exact same output. 
but we are receiving one of the benefits I listed here. Actually, we receive two. So first we have a better overview at a, well, that's the second benefit, but we have a better overview because we can determine exactly what the dashboard looks like because we made it uh, more reusable by defining the dashboard up here. Instead of it always being the same thing, we could also say we suddenly want an H2 right here that says, hello world. And we can just uh, see how that displays in the browser. And uh, if we get rid of the hello world, we also get another benefit and that is more control at a higher level because every instance of dashboard is now is not the same anymore, but we can really define what we want inside of it right here instead of in the dashboard itself um, by just forwarding the children. And we can take this even one step further by also customizing, customizing the welcome message in the exact same way by leveraging the technique of um, component composition. So we can make this uh, not self-closing, but we actually have two tags and uh, that would be like this, yep. And inside that welcome message, we are not gonna receive the username either, but we are gonna receive children and those are gonna be of type React node as well. And now we can just render the children in our welcome message and pass whatever we want inside of the welcome message up here. So as you can see, if we want like a P that says, how are you feeling? We can do that up here. Take a look in the browser and see it displays exactly what we want. But we just have way more customizability, better component reusability, and we also have more control at a higher level, which is very advantageous and gives us a better overview and better maintainability of our project. Now, the third benefit I listed here is performance. And you might be wondering, how does this contribute to performance? And how it does that is, um, let's take a look at the dashboard. So let's say in the dashboard, we want something like a progress bar. That's an example I read in an article about this topic and I think it displays really well what we are gonna experience when we utilize or leverage um, component composition. So let's go inside of a use effect and add an event listener. And every time we have a key down, we want that handled. So we have a handler. That handler we're gonna define up here and it's just going to increase a state that we have. Um, so let's say counter, set counter, it's gonna be a number, number is gonna be zero. We're gonna import the state. And now the handler is gonna set, actually we're gonna log handler, and then it's gonna set the counter to whatever the counter was previously, and then add one to the counter. And just to clean up after ourselves, we're gonna return a document dot remove Oops, remove event listener of this exact same thing. Okay, so that counter we can render, for example, up here, counter is, and then we're gonna have the counter. And now let's also have a button that says increase counter. And whenever we click that button, so on click, that's gonna, uh, actually, no, we don't We don't need that button at all. So every time we press uh, a key on the keyboard, then this function is gonna run nevertheless. We don't need the button then. And every time the dashboard renders, let's log out dashboard rendered. And every time the welcome message rendered, we're gonna log out welcome message, message rendered. Rendered, okay. Now let's go into the browser and see what happens. So let, let me clear the entire um, browser. And whenever I press a key, I'm pressing keys right now, we can see the dashboard rendered. But what we don't see is that the welcome message rendered, even though the welcome message is a part of the dashboard. So the children that we see in the dashboard are not getting re-rendered. So that means anything that is inside of the children, like uh, one example would be, that this is not a welcome message, but it's a blog article. And a blog article would be a rather expensive re-rendering because in one blog article, there's a lot of stuff you can have and you really don't want to re-render that um, every time, for example, you scroll to display the progress of scrolling on the top because that's gonna cause a lot of re-renders and you don't need to re-render the browser, uh, the, the blog article 
every time that you scroll. That would be completely pointless. And one way to avoid that is by leveraging component composition. So that's why you get better performance as well, because you avoid a re-renders on critical things. Now, this is not really critical, but the blog article would. So the children are not getting re-rendered because the props to the children don't change. So these children right here don't change. And that's why this component is not being re-rendered, but this P tag is, and this fragment is, but not the children. So that's why we see the dashboard keeps getting re-rendered every time um, I press a key. So I'm pressing keys right now and the dashboard is being rendered and the handler is being, uh, you know, run but the welcome message itself is not being re-rendered. And that's why we leverage all three benefits, a better overview, because this just provides a better overview or of whatever is inside of the components, more control at a higher level, because we can exactly define what we want in there and what we don't want. And so we get more control. And also we receive better performance because critical components we can stop from re-rendering and therefore our application in the end will be much faster and more optimized. Okay, I really like this concept. I hope I could hammer that point home. I wish you a lot of fun applying this knowledge in your own React projects. I think on your way to becoming a intermediate to senior dev, I think this concept is very important to master. Um, thank you for watching. I'll see you again in the next video. Until then, bye bye.